That calls for an MXE impact replay. <laughs> So one of Japan's craziest and most exciting game shows just came back to TV after more than 30 years, Takeshi's Castle. And it got me wondering, are we gonna get a reboot of MXC? Can it even exist in 2023? So I rewatched the whole show to find out. We'll also be talking a little bit about the new 2023 Takeshi's Castle, as well as the differences between MXC and the original show. If you've never seen MXC, then I hope by the end of this, you'll see why this was one of my favorite shows growing up. And if you did, then I hope this will make you wanna binge watch it all over again. That theme song goes hard. Japanese game shows are like watching a car accident. You know you're about to see something messed up, but you can't look away. Huh? <laughs> One Japanese show called Zagaman, or Endurance, even earned the Guinness World Record for the most extreme game show. The most extreme game show comes from Japan. It was like a Fear Factor meets Jackass predecessor on steroids, and even received complaints from some British prisoners of war due to the nature of the show. <laughs> But today, we're gonna to be looking at a different kind of extreme show. No one does game shows quite like the Japanese. Hispanics had Sabado Gigante, and even that was nowhere near the level of insanity that Takeshi's Castle or MXC had. I've always wanted to visit Japan, but I have this irrational fear of going to use the public restroom and then accidentally ending up on a Japanese game show while I'm taking a dump. From what I've seen of the 2023 reboot, it looks like they've upped the ante and added new challenges, made the old ones even crazier, and brought back some familiar faces. Let's go! We'll get a little more into the 2023 reboot in a bit, but first let's dial it back about 20 years. In the United States, Takeshi's Castle came to us in the form of MXE, Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. Before that, Fox tried bringing the show over, calling it King of the Mountain in 1990. And CBS also tried in 1993 with Storm the Castle, but both versions failed to catch on. Along came MXC and aired from 2003 to 2007. With episode titles such as Superheroes vs. MySpace and Desperate Housewives vs. Ultimate Fighters, MXC was a little slice of America in the mid 2000s. But how can a show with Japanese origins be a shining example of 2000s American pop culture? Takeshi's Castle was a popular game show in Japan in the late 80s. The show's popularity led it to be adapted and exported to over 150 countries. There was nothing quite like it on TV at the time, and since then we've had many, let's call them inspirations, depending on who you ask. If you ask the show's creators, they might call some of them a blatant ripoff. In fact, the Tokyo Broadcasting System, the network that owns Takeshi's Castle and co owns MXC, sued ABC for copyright copyright infringement for the show Wipeout, arguing that many of the games were derived from their Japanese game shows and the commentary style was too close to MXCs. They settled the lawsuit out of court in 2011. Spike's bringing you back-to-back -back episodes of MXC, the show that started it all, not some lousy ripoff. The original Takeshi's Castle aired from 1986 to 1990 and starred comedian and actor Takeshi Kitano as Count Takeshi. The point of the show was for the contestants to navigate through various obstacles with hopes of defeating Count Takeshi and his army in order to win 1 million yen. Around 100 competitors were led by General Hayato Tani as part of the attack team. As the game progressed, many of them would be eliminated and the remaining survivors would eventually make it to Takeshi's castle where they would compete in the final showdown with Takeshi's army in a cart battle. Aside from being a comedian, actor, and filmmaker, Takeshi also dabbled in video game development helping create one of the worst video games of all time due to its difficulty titled Takeshi's Challenge. University referred to as one the worst ranking and hardest video games of all time. It's Takeshi's Challenge. There were also two Takeshi's Castle games for the Family Trainer, or the Power Pad, as it was known in the United States. Right you are, Ken. <laughs> the impact of Takeshi's Castle in Japan alone was huge, and it was about to set the world ablaze. There was clearly something universally appealing about the show that led it to be dubbed in so many countries. Maybe it was the unique and painful impacts. Even when being eliminated, it looked like the contestants were having so much fun. There was also a relatability factor to it. A lot of the contestants were everyday people, so part of you was saying, I could do that. This was before super athletes would dominate the obstacle course game show space later on. Or you know what? Maybe it was the outlandish costumes. Stay in school, or you'll wind up like this big-eared, shiny-suited crackhead. Oh, shut up! You're going to fetch my pipe! I didn't know you were an MXE, Goku. Now, I'm not going to call MXE just a dub because it's more than that. In fact, it's a completely different show from Takeshi's Castle. None of the international versions of Takeshi's Castle were a direct translation, and as far as I know, there are only a handful of English subtitled episodes that were made available on the MXC DVDs. Executive producer and co-creator Peter Kaiko referred to MXC as more of a parody of extreme sports rather than a full-blown game show. In the 90s and 2000s, there was this weird trend of making everything extreme, from food to sports. Extreme 90s. 
nachos, new from Taco Bell. It's not the first time Americans have used Japanese footage and repurposed it. Oh, God, Vic, you know who that is? I like brown. Well, that's Sphinctar, leader of the Power Rump Rangers, Ken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, their mission was to wipe out crime in the solar system from their secret oh, base in Uranus. Oh, oh. Power Rangers still uses Super Sentai footage for their show to this day, and there are definitely worse examples of Western adaptations taking liberties. These donuts are great. Jelly-filled are my favorite. Nothing beats a jelly-filled donut. MXE was like Ninja Warrior meets Urban Dictionary. If you've ever laughed at adult parody movie names like Dr. Doomy a Little, Shaving Ryan's Privates, or Womb Raider, then this show is right up your alley. Pun intended. MXE was on Spike TV along with shows such as Mancers, Thousand Ways to Die, Stripperella, Deadliest Warrior, and also aired MMA and Pro Wrestling. In case you don't know or remember, Spike TV was branded as the first network for men. Yeah, guy stuff. <laughs> I think the sense of humor of this show is definitely in line with that branding, but that doesn't mean women couldn't enjoy it. I mean, my mom got a kick out of it. Granted, she didn't speak English, but it was still fun for the whole family. Rewatching this show as an adult is like putting on a pair of jeans and finding money in the pocket. As a kid, a lot of the jokes went over my head. I've been rewatching this as an adult, and the amount of jokes per second is insane. Richard Cresty! He's a triple expert on adult entertainment. Yeah, he's got one of those pornographic memories. His knowledge of adult oh. cinema is almost obscene, oh. Ken. But he oh. studies hard. Oh. Oh. And he's walked out the set board and run into the reservoir. Adults could enjoy the raunchy jokes and the kids got a kick out of the physical humor. It was just overall a very appealing show to people of all backgrounds. The original source footage from Takeshi's Castle was definitely funny on its own, but the MXC commentary added a whole nother layer to it. The show intentionally ignores that it's from Japan and that's probably why it was so immersive. This is all fake. You could just flip the switch in your brain and pretend it was real like a magic show or pro wrestling. Hey Vic, look what I just read. The Coiler used to be a professional wrestler. He was known as Fat Elvis. Right you are, Ken, and who can forget his blue suede thong? Yeah. That made it more fun, at least to me. The juxtaposition of the original Japanese footage and the American voices and humor made for a one-of-a-kind TV show that made you double take and left you wanting more. With Olympic commentator Liam McCann. Liam, welcome. Top of the morning, Guy. We've got us a stone soul barn burner, me brother. In all seriousness, you'll find MXC a lot more enjoyable if you don't take it seriously. But MXC is more than just crass fart jokes. If you actually listen to the commentary, it's filled with witty wordplay, puns, and double on time is worthy of Shakespearean theater. I have Sergio Puente, Director of Research and Development at the Pastorini Institute of Cheddar. He's a real cheese whiz. Indeed he is, and he whizzed that one. See? Have you even read Shakespeare? Yeah, my milk Shakespeare's all the boys in the yard. Damn right, it's better than yours. I'm sure the dirty jokes got eyeballs on the show, but don't let that overshadow the top tier writing. And here's Fred Kaczynski, the email bomber. Oh! Fred, you got jail. Indeed he does. I feel like the producers don't get enough praise for the writing because the blue comedy style of the show overshadows it. I'm a sex addict! Stay with me on this one. There were hilarious shots all the time on the show and while they may seem random... I like Batman! I have a rush! I lost my dog! If you look closely, you'll see the team goes the extra mile to make sure that the lips match the voice. I'm allergic to soap! Can you smell me from here? I got your alimony check right here, baby. Get for my homies. Oh. I'm sure you've seen a foreign movie where you see the guy mouthing his lips, but the dialogue just doesn't sync up with his mouth. Hey, who's he? I don't know. Honestly, you really didn't care about the competitive aspect itself. It didn't matter who won because the highlights of the show were the physical humor and the comedic voiceover work of Kenny Blankenship and Vic Romano. The show where everything's made up and the points don't matter. That's right, the points don't matter. For example, at the end of the organized crime versus weight loss industry episode, the weight loss team had originally won. But this was reversed due to the organized crime team threatening our hosts. And that puts the weight loss team ahead for the final of four to two. Wow, that's cool. The diet people won. Well, actually, Ken, they didn't. According to the envelope I received before the game, the organized crime team has won five to four. What? That's not fair. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Members of the opposite team were also whacked throughout the episode. None of it mattered as long as it was funny and in line with the theme of the episode. I mean, could you even tell who was on which team? To add on to this, the show's producers would take parts from various episodes of Takeshi's Castle that fit whatever narrative they were trying to tell. Occasionally, some of the game footage would be reused. So yeah, an episode of MXE could be essentially Frankenstein for multiple Takeshi's Castle episodes. Oh, look here, Vicky's totally showing off. Actually, Ken, those are post-operative spasms. The teams would basically set up the theme for the episode with a lot of the jokes, names, and references revolving around this. That's George St. Pierre. <laughs> better known as Filthy Pierre. And who can forget when he came face-to-face -face with Diego Sanchez? <laughs> Filthy Pierre versus Dirty Sanchez! Oh! And here's NASCAR champ Kyle Potty, who was trained by his father, Richard. Oh, so he was potty trained? Right you are, Ken, for the potties racing is their duty. 
Don't eat the deviled eggs. Woo! Next up, World Wrestling's Matt Farty, one half of the Farty Boys tag team. Woo! And first up is Mike Cuban. He's an internet explorer who sailed across eBay. The first episode filmed, College Girls, was the only episode that didn't have two competing teams. If you watch this episode, it has a much different feel than the other episodes. It almost feels like the show's writers were still trying to find their groove here. Vic and Kenny sounded much more like sports commentators here rather than the rapid fire joke style that we would become used to later on. Yes, it's anyone's game. And lots of action still to come. What are you doing with your voice, man? I'm being an announcer. They even used a different actor for Guy before they established that other members of his family also worked as field reporters. Early on, a lot of the replays were actually sponsored by companies like Slim Jim and Taco Bell. These were removed from the DVD releases and streaming sites, but you can still see them in the captions. But I think we need to go to the MXE Impact Replay. Let's take it back to our host. Here's two guys who always test positive, Kenny Blankenship and Vic Romano. Vic Romano and Kenny Blankenship were our host and commentators, voiced by Vic Wilson and Christopher Dario, respectively. Sadly, Vic Wilson passed away in 2015. R.I.P. Vic has a history of alcohol abuse and failed marriages and is often the butt of the joke. This is serious. There are recovery steps involved. I myself have gone through seven of the 12. Addiction is a disease. Vic also has some notable catchphrases sprinkled throughout the show. Indeed. Kenny, did you just say indeed? Yeah. Yes. Right you are, Vic. Kenny, those happen to be my catchphrases. You don't see me woohooing all over the place, do you? His right-hand man, Kenny Blankenship, was the source of a lot of the comic relief and recapped the top 10 impacts from the show at the end of each episode. The two had a Beavis and Butthead-like relationship, with Kenny being the Beavis of the group. I bet we're gonna see some violence. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Bear claw. Vic was the more serious one of the duo, while Kenny often was the more immature party goer. Hi, I'm Kenny Blankenship. Oh, drinking beer. This <laughs> chasing chicks. Uh, gotta look up Kenny Blankenship. This is probably because Kenny is a nepo baby whose uncle owns the network. You know, Vic, I was looking at that union pay scale thing. You're like, uh, you're like way, way down yes, at the bottom. Okay, I make like ten times the money that you yeah. make. This is a complete 180 from Takeshi's Castle, where Vic is. Count Takeshi and Kenny is his assistant. We also have Captain Tennille, a ladies' man named after the husband and wife musical duo Captain Antonio. Described as a right wing bully by his voice actor John Cervenka, you see him at the start of each episode, misleading the crowd into agreeing with a statement related to the theme of the show. How many of you think that high quality health care should be made available to everybody, regardless of income or ability to pay? Show of hands. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You're all wrong. Rich people stay healthy. Poor people get sick and die. He's also usually there to kick off the games in the style of legendary boxing referee Mills Lane. Let's get it all! In Takeshi's Castle, the captain is General Hayato Tani and is there to lead the contestants throughout the challenges. Next, we have fan favorite Guy LaDouche. But you're my grandma's favorite. Well, where was Nana Blankenship when I finished behind Guy LaDouche in an internet popularity pack? Ah, that blows. Guy is the field reporter with a French accent who often previews the games at the start of the episode and interviews the contestants. He's also an eccentric pervert whose rat spared no one, regardless of gender. Yeah. Yeah, baby doll. <laughs> oh, he likes. Guy is also voiced by John Cervenka. We also have our guards, including former MLB baseball player Brad Animal Leslie and wrestlers from New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong Kobayashi and Umanosuke Ueda. Almost every episode also included a member of the Baba Ganoush family. There's Balzac, Baba Ganoush, and Anus Felcha. And there's one more important character, or should I say characters, featured in each episode. Every girl, the voice of most of the female characters in the show, is played by Mary Shear, who you may recognize from Matt TV, Susie and Hey Arnold, or as Freddie's mom in I Mother Fucking Carly. Freddie, you're not going to Japan. You're coming home with me to take a bath. Sorry, this just blew my mind when I found this out. From kids shows to sketch comedy to dubbing Japanese game shows, I grew an appreciation for her range as an actress. Wet and sticky is very icky. Sticky and wet makes mommy upset. I couldn't unhear Freddy's mom in MXC after that. I haven't changed my underwear since Friday! <laughs> no. Quick behind the scenes note, I was playing random episodes of MXC as I was editing this and I heard that underwear line and made a note to use it and I forgot to write down which episode it was in so I rewatched every single MXC episode again from start to finish before I found it again in the last season in almost the last episode. Remember kids, note taking is an important skill. Okay, rant over. Unlike Takeshi's Castle, MXC took the participants of the show and put them into makeshift teams, pitting them against each other. Today, porn industry workers will battle it out with a team of home improvement specialists. It's the do-it-yourselfers versus the people who do everyone. This was one big deviation from the original show where all the contestants were a part of the attack team led by the general competing for the chance to face Takeshi in a final showdown. MXC only used the footage from the final battle in the Celebrity Justice vs. TV Motor Shows episode and it was briefly used in the ending scenes of the show where they shout so get Buckle up my young chump! We'll be driving the LA freeways and it's chock full of celebrity hoodlums. Keep on your toes! <laughs> well done! 
Hey, get the guns in the glove compartment. Let you are. Ready to go. Locked and loaded. Go. Takeshi's Castle episodes were about an hour long compared to MXC's 30 minute episodes. An episode of Takeshi's Castle would take 10 hours to film, plus the final car battle would be filmed a week later. The MXC team would also spend 10 hours a day, but obviously the processes were different. Takeshi's Castle had skits in between the challenges and the MXC team would pick and choose from them to become Vic and Kenny scenes. There were rumors that MXC ran out of footage and that's why the show ended, but in reality they had the rights to enough footage to make around 500 episodes of MXC. In this skit from Takeshi's Castle, Takeshi and Hideo discuss sending spies to infiltrate the General's forces, while in MXC it was used in the footwear industry versus electronic gaming episode where Kenny introduces the girls as models for his new video game Street Chick Fighter. The parents and kids in Takeshi's Castle became the mentors and protégés in the white collar versus blue collar episode in MXC. We win, I'll buy you a car! A Ferrari? No way! There is one episode of MXC you won't find in Takeshi's Castle. The season 3 premiere Greeks vs Geeks episode also known as MXC Almost Live featured original footage and was filmed in Orlando, Florida. Our team captains were none other than pro skater Tony Hawk and snowboarder Tara Dakitas. Even though the episode had American contestants, they weren't spared from being dubbed by the MXC cast. It doesn't matter what I say, you're going to overdub my voice. I've seen my sister naked! Huh? Tony and Tara are the only ones not dubbed. We still had Vic, Kenny, Captain Tenille, and Guy in this episode, but we also had Major Babe and Gip LaDouche to fill in for the Captain and Guy in the live scenes. This episode is a big what if. What if we had a fully live American MXC before Wipeout? The UK version of Takeshi's Castle is a much different viewer experience from MXC. You can still hear the original Japanese audio under comedian Craig Charles' commentary. Welcome to Takeshi's Castle, the game show that's harder to beat than eggs. It feels more like Charles is right there with you experiencing the chaos for the first time by your side. His commentary is basically saying what you're thinking with some humor mixed in there. There's some notable differences between the UK version and the US version. The UK version still keeps the final battle with Takeshi, but many of the skits with Takeshi and his assistant are missing. Almost all the names of the games are different, but it's interesting to see how they each interpret them to fit the narrative of the show. For example, in the UK, this game is known as Blueberry Hill. On MXC, it's called Mind Games and refers to the costumes as reclaimed World War II mines. In reality, the game is called Daruma Sanga Koronda. The contestants are dressed as Daruma dolls and the game is basically a Japanese version of Red Light Green Light crossed with Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. At the end of the day, you're going to prefer the version you grew up watching, whether it was MXC in the US, the UK's version with Craig Charles, the Hindi version with Javed Joffrey, or the uh, Spanish version, Humor Amarillo. The UK had a reboot in 2013 where they aired previously unseen parts of Takeshi's Castle along with new footage filmed by the general. Ultimately, the 2013 reboot received backlash from fans mostly due to the absence of Craig Charles on commentary. As I mentioned earlier, none of the international versions of Takeshi's Castle can really be considered authentic because they all take liberties with the show and none are direct translations. But the one thing every version shared was bone-crushing challenges. Many of the games you see in MXC slash Takeshi's Castle resemble something you might see playing some of the mini-games in Mario Party. The influence of this show is huge. For the younger crowd out there, you might be thinking, this looks like Fall Guys. Well, you're right. Joe Walsh, creative director and lead design over at Fall Guys, has stated that Takeshi's Castle was an inspiration for the game early on. Mario Party and Fall Guys might be the safest way to experience this type of chaos. For my homies! Oh. I think the only reason they didn't put a Don't Try This At Home label at the beginning of each episode was probably because there was no way to replicate it. Could you imagine if we went through a phase of recording ourselves doing these challenges like we do with Jackass? Go back in the house, Lois. We're being Jackass. It honestly looks so fun, but I guess we had to settle for those inflatable obstacle courses at school. Some of the games are based on skill, some on luck, and others a mix of the two. Right you are, Ken. Here she is. She's up against Little Link's the Killer Pig! There was nothing worse than drawing the blue vayner or the green teabagger and trying to rub a win out in circle jerkers. It looks like it might have been a classic teabagging guess! Oh. Mm, let's see, what else is there? There's bowling, baseball, surfing, gambling, karaoke, pachinko. Pachinko! Lasers, races, mazes. Whales, walls, balls, snow, stones, slopes, ropes, holes, bowls, poles. Wood, could, should, hood. Oh, and a shitload of mud. Oh, he's out of his he's got us. Oh. Yay, I he is certainly dressed for success today, Ken. The source of the mystery sludge was a running joke throughout the show. Today's muck is provided by Andy Scat Porta Potties. Our safety fluid provided by the Fudge Shack. I made this nice little spreadsheet tracking all of the challenges because I hate myself and I have no better use of my time. The games with the most appearances were Sinkers and Floaters, Log Drop, and Rotating Surfboard of Death. This makes sense since I think those challenges were the ones that created some of the best impacts. If I had to pick a favorite, it's between Sinkers and Floaters, Brass Balls, and Clear Sphere of Fear. Six Gun Shakur sings hip hop country songs. Yeah, I like uh, Grape Soda with the flaming Hot Cheeto. Me too, Six Gun. Me too.
The Takeshi's Castle reboot premiered on April 21st, 2023 on Amazon Prime in Japan. As of this recording, the English version isn't out yet, but it's expected to drop sometime this year along with the other versions on Prime Video. I think Spain is the only one with a confirmed release date so far. I tried accessing it with a VPN, but that didn't work since I guess you need a Japanese Prime account. I could sail the good old Pirate Bay, but without subtitles, I'd be pretty lost, so I'll wait patiently for the official release. But thanks to tonight's Raw on YouTube, there's a 40 minute subtitle preview we can look at to whet our appetite. So minor spoiler alert in case you don't want any details on the Takeshi's Castle reboot. I'll leave the link in the description in case you want to check out the full video. The 2023 version of Takeshi's Castle will be made up of 8 episodes and will have over 300 participants including some from Ninja Warrior. There are plenty of new faces as well as old ones but I didn't see Hideo or Junji Inagawa, the actor that played Gi. Hideo went into politics and even became a governor in 2007 and it looks like he has plans to run again. Takeshi himself is back and has recruited some new lords to defend the castle and it seems like he's going to be some kind of Shao Kahn type final boss that'll show up towards the end of the show. General Tani will also be back and now has a second in command. Man, Subaru Kimura. As far as challenges go, we have some old favorites returning like sinkers and floaters, brass balls, rotating surfboard of death, and more. It looks like they've decided to make each of them more difficult by either making them longer or adding more obstacles. Plus, there's a DJ. Door Jam will also be making a return and we're keeping the tradition alive of bringing in New Japan wrestlers to fuck your shit up in this maze. Plus, they have GoPros now, so that should add some cool new angles. We also have some new games like Block Block, From Right to Left, and Yabusame. Block Block caught my eye since it looks like it took some elements from Log Drop and will probably lead to some nice instant replays. I think the MXC team would have a field day with from right to left. It looks like you're getting shafted from both ends by some exclamation marks so maybe they can rename it double punctuation or DP in a potential MXC version. Yabusame is the most visually stimulating thing I've seen in this preview with all the lights and whatnot. From what I can tell, this is the next step in the evolution of the final kart showdown. Plus with a 200% difficulty rating, this challenge is no joke. There's also some mystery person set to be revealed, although I don't think it's gonna be Gi. It doesn't quite match his body, but regardless, I'm still excited to be able to watch Takeshi's Castle later this year. So it's time to answer the big question. Can an updated version of MXC exist today? It would be an uphill battle to bring it back with some key elements missing from both the original Takeshi's Castle side as well as the MXC side. Again, RIP Vic Wilson and thank you for the memories. There are plenty of new characters that they can work with and the MXC voice actors certainly have the range to be able to pull it off. Although I'm not sure of their current employment status, but it looks like Mary Shearer still has some ties to Paramount Plus, aka the new Spike TV. Maybe they can use AI voices to fill in any gaps. Just kidding. Don't do that. That would be terrible. Speaking of Spike TV, you know at one point MXC was their highest rated show and constantly aired marathons. You would think that has to count for something with the folks over at Paramount, right? A lot of people seem to think that in today's climate, MXC would not be PC enough to exist. And yeah, towards the last season of the show, you can notice that they relied a bit more on the dirty jokes and celebrity references. But with Spike TV dead and gone, I'm sure the MXC team would have more creative freedom now. At the network, we take hip, original ideas and turn them into something trite and accessible. They're certainly talented enough to make it work. It's not like we don't have raunchy shows today. Just look at South Park. Their brand of satire still works because it's clever and well written. After rewatching all the episodes multiple times, I still got a kick out of a lot of the jokes, and some are still relevant today. At what age does the Hollywood trophy wife lose her shine? Ready? Finger it. And there's R. Kelly who goes out for the number 10, but of course the answer is 18. R. Kelly often mistakes 10 for 18. In the streaming era today, there are so many reboots of old shows that could be hit or miss, ranging from meh to straight booty cheeks. Maybe an 8 episode run on Amazon Prime is the best way to test the waters and see if they can catch lightning in a bottle again with Takeshi's Castle or MXC. If all those other shows can get a chance, then I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Yes, damn it, MXC can totally exist today. I wanted to see new episodes. Just imagine Uber drivers versus Twitch streamers, OnlyFans models versus crypto bros, or Discord mods versus podcast hosts. I guess I don't know how the 2023 contestants would react to them being made fun of since there's no 20 year gap between the shows this time. I mean anorexia! Wow, who's anorexia? Why did he beat her up? Good question, Ken. And you know with that whole internet thing nowadays, they would immediately catch wind of it. Oh well, we'll see. Who knows, maybe they'd love to get memed. I really wanted to make this video because I think the MXC team should get their flowers. I loved catching MXC marathons back in the day before we had YouTube and fail compilations. If we don't get an MXC reboot, I'll still be happy with a regular Takeshi's Castle English dub. Or at least, can we start using MXC clips instead of Subway Surfers and those TikToks? You know which ones I'm talking about? The ones that play like Family Guy clips and then have another video under it to hold your short attention span and whatnot. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, you can check out MXC for free on Tubi or Amazon Prime. There used to be a 24-7 Twitch channel that would air all the episodes, but it got taken down, so I'm not sure if that'll come back someday. If you like these nostalgic deep dives, then make sure to subscribe to my channel to get more of my content. And remember, 